Oh, hey guys. Just that fine trophy mug here. Best trophy ever. Right there. What's up everyone? Adam here from Cape Crawlers. And this is the Axial SCX24 Bronco Build Part 10. Welcome back to the channel, my friends, and welcome back to the Bronco Build, the final episode, the epic conclusion of the Bronco Build. And man, did we go out with a bang. We had such an awesome conclusion to this series. So if you follow me on Instagram or you might have seen some of my posts on YouTube, you probably saw that we ended up going to a crawler competition with the Bronco and with some other rigs too. Now the competition was at Reckless Hobbies in Wareham, Massachusetts. They are an epic hobby shop and they throw crazy events. This was no different. This was Crawloween and it was so good. They had 10th scale crawler competition, 24th scale crawler competition, stunt bikes, monster trucks, cookouts it was just awesome such a good time shout out to reckless hobbies for putting on a killer event it was so awesome and you might have seen me enjoying my amazing trophy from that event now i have to say this is a first place trophy we did win the 24 scale competition but we didn't do it with the bronco how the bronco do it did pretty good yeah, we'll get into that a little later in the video but it was the deadbolt snaggletooth that ended up winning the competition but man, what a good time. It was so much fun. I brought all the rigs to the event. We had them all displayed. And it was so cool to meet a bunch of different subscribers and a bunch of folks that know me from Instagram. Just great to network and meet fantastic people from this community. Just like totally reinvigorated me with the hobby. And I'm just so pumped to take this to the next level. But this is the Bronco build. I'm gonna do another video on the competition itself let's get back to the bronco build here so i figured for this video we'd split this up into two different parts we'll do one video but we'll do two chapters the first chapter i figured we'd do kind of blog style take you along to the competition show you how that went show you some highlights really capture kind of the capstone of this build which is seeing the bronco in action on a competition course so we'll kind of do the fun stuff first because i know that's what you probably all really want to see so we'll do that first and then for the folks who really want the comprehensive build overview, we'll do kind of the top-down build overview of the Bronco, kind of off the top of my head as comprehensive as I can get it in the end of the video. And then we'll wrap it all up together. So let's go on a trip. Let's check out Reckless Hobbies for the Crawloween 2022 event. Let's go. So real quick before we get into the reckless footage, I just need to preface by saying that I know a lot of you don't like music over my videos, especially the crawling footage. But because of the background music that they were playing at the event, I have to put music over the footage because otherwise it was throwing up major copyright flags. So I apologize ahead of time for the music. Tried to keep it low key as much as I could, but I had to do it otherwise couldn't get the video out. So enjoy. So we're at Crawloween here, Reckless Hobbies. An awesome turnout this far. We got the right there all set up. We've already met a bunch of people who recognize us from the channel and social, which is awesome. It's so cool to come out and meet people. Right, buddy. We having a good time? Yeah. Yes. Look at that thing. So it's the SCX6 platform? Yes. Man. On a G Speed GS6 rails. GS6 rails. Man, it looks awesome. Daddy? Even bigger than me. It sure is. Go stand, go stand next to the tire. Whoa. Well, they use it. They use it hard. 
There's moose, more stuff over here. Hey, there's more stuff over here. Oh, look at that, buddy. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Yes, it sure is. Look at that thing. Awesome. a miniature version of the monster truck out there. That's cool. Hit it. Nice. You almost did a backflip.
Every other aftermarket part is like, yeah, we four millimeters wider. It's true. Every set of wheels you get is wider. Couple is wider. Want to add weight up the spaces? Just packing up now, had an amazing time at Reckless today. So much fun. Got to meet so many people, so many subscribers and people who knew us from Instagram. Had a blast out here today. Put the Bronco and the Deadbolt in the competition. Bronco did pretty good. It got fourth place, I think. Fourth or fifth, something like that. But the Deadbolt took first place. So we ended up coming home with a actually a new rig. We came home with a new, I think 12 scale. No, we came home with a new 18 scale Jeep Wrangler. So another cool rig that we got as a first place trophy. We also got a big beer mug that has the first place on it. So some cool swag too. Just an awesome time out here. Great group of folks, had a blast. So I'm gonna pack it up now. This was a perfect way to end the Bronco series. Got to showcase it out on the crawler course. I got to meet a bunch of people and talk about the build. Just a great day at the 10th scale track behind me. So big shout out to Reckless Hobbies, man. It's such a great time out here. Made some new connections, made some friends. It's gonna be good. You know, we're gonna get to get, to get together and do some crawling with some people that I met here. So it was awesome. So great event. You know, this place is awesome. If you're in the Massachusetts area, New England area, highly recommend you come check this place out. It's got the epic crawler course. There's a great carpet track inside. They do lots of awesome events like this all throughout the year. So just an awesome place. So huge shout out to Reckless Hobbies here in Wareham, Massachusetts. But that's gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna pack it up. We got the got the crate, got the studio loaded up. It was funny, I had people come by and say that they, they recognized us from the Jeep crate with the rigs on it. So it was just cool. Really neat, really neat, great day. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. We're gonna pack up and head home. So what'd you think? Pretty cool, right? The Bronco did awesome. Super proud of how the Bronco did, particularly on that really tight technical course. You know, that's just a tabletop course. I think it's probably eight by four is the dimensions and it's all spray foam insulation, which if you remember during our build series, the little guy racing parts gripper tires don't really like the foam. Remember we struggled a little bit on mini Moab here on our home course for that very same reason. So I'm really proud of the Bronco for doing as good as it did. I think it got fourth or fifth overall, I can't remember, but it performed really well. You know, didn't flip over, didn't go end over end, didn't topple over. You know, I was really proud of it for how it performed on that course. But the main benefit and the best part of that whole event was just meeting the people and getting to share stories with each other and connect with subscribers. Man, what an awesome event. 
so much fun. I made some great connections with some vendors and some businesses. So we're gonna do some collabs going forward with some local businesses and also some national businesses too. So I got some really great content coming for you. Some, some great stuff is really gonna come out of that. So it was just an awesome event. So really pumped I was able to take you along on that journey. Really happy that it all worked out kind of serendipitously together to kind of cap off the Bronco build. What a great way to send this thing off. But man, so much fun. I could go on and on about that event. We just had a blast. Anyway, let's move on into the second part of this video and we're gonna dive into the Bronco and do a build overview. So we'll pull everything together. I'm gonna to go over this off the top of my head and if I forget anything, I'll put everything in the description down below. You know, I'll compile the parts list from the videos prior and make sure I didn't miss anything. And I'll put the links and everything in the description so if you're interested in parts, you know, go down, go down in the description and check it all out. And with that, let's dive in and check out the build. So like my other build videos, we'll do this in three different parts. We'll do the appearance, we'll do chassis and suspension, we'll do drivetrain, and then we'll pivot and we'll head over to the competition and I'll show you some footage from that event and we'll see how the Bronco did and then we'll wrap it up. So let's dive into the build. All right, from an appearance standpoint, Let's check this thing out. So some of the aesthetic upgrades, the appearance upgrades that we did was the bumper. So we've got a hot racing aluminum front bumper here. It's also got the hot racing aluminum bumper mount, which is flipped to raise the bumper up because once I was starting to mess with the chassis, I had to raise the body posts up, which left a gap here in the, in the front. So we ended up doing this this uh, flip of the, it's actually a C10 mount that I mounted upside down to raise the bumper up. And because it's aluminum, you know, the whole setup's aluminum, it's super solid. I'm really happy with this setup, it, uh, it looks great. I was originally hesitant to use the hot racing bumper because I wasn't a fan of it in the beginning, but it's really grown on me and this setup is just so solid and feels so good that I don't wanna change it. So I'm really happy with it right now. From a wheel and tire perspective, this is a big one. You know, we've got the Little Guy Racing Parts gripper tires on here. Love these tires. They're just so soft and sticky and they're just, they work fantastic. They definitely live up to their name. So gripper tires here. It has the flubber stuffer slime ball inserts on this one, which I think is another great upgrade that I, I definitely noticed, especially with the Bronco and how heavy it is. It seems to really benefit from the slime balls. You know, the added sidewall support really helps this thing from a stability standpoint. And I really like this setup. The tire and wheel setup on this is great. For the wheels, these are RC all-wheel drive brass and aluminum wheels. So they are very heavy. They're about 20, 29 grams, 27, 29 grams a piece, I believe. And they just have this beautiful fit and finish to them. These are the red wheels with the black rings. They also make these in a black wheel with a red ring, which I had on this in the beginning of the build actually. And then we ended up swapping once I got my hands on another set of these. So really dig these wheels. The, this is probably my favorite wheel and tire combo of any of my builds. I think it just looks fantastic on this thing. We've also got the Endura rock sliders here. You know, I grabbed the rock sliders because I felt like the hard body was getting beat up on the rocks. You know, It's got this nice metallic paint and early on it was really getting scratched up on the side here. Endura makes these really nice rock sliders that have done a really good job kind of saving the body, I think. So they look great and they're also functional. In the back, you know, I trimmed off the spare tire. It's a bummer that you can't remove this in a way without destroying it because you have to clip it off and then file it down. So it's a permanent adjustment and I was, you know, early on, I was really reluctant to get rid of the spare tire because I really liked that look, but I'm happy with it gone. I think it looks really good without it. I've got to figure out a way to kind of clean up that little stub there. I've trimmed the rear bumper. So when I cut the fenders and I put bigger tires on it, it was really rubbing hard on this rear bumper. So I tried to trim that as much as I could and still maintain that factory look. So it's the factory bumper, but it's modified in a way that allows for clearance of the big tires. 
I mentioned the fenders. So, you know, we, we trimmed the fenders. Really what I did was just go around and remove the black fender flares and then smooth it out with some sandpaper. You know, that was a really nerve-wracking move with the hard body, but it really made a huge difference, and that really took the Bronco to the next level. I think that was episode 7 when we did that, and it was like a monumental leap forward when we did that. The Bronco was never the same again. I think that's pretty much it from an appearance standpoint. You know, the rest of it we'll get into with the chassis and suspensions. Why don't we do that next? Let's take a look at that. Okay, now let's look at the chassis and suspension. So this is really where a lot of the magic happened with this thing. Yeah, what we did, we put, you know, my typical suite of upgrades on here. We did the long travel shocks, mounted them to the frame. We did the high clearance linkage. So it's got the Endura high clearance linkage with the four link conversion in the front. I really think that makes a big difference. We also did the one o-ring per mounting position on these links. I think that also makes a big difference as far as allowing these things to pivot and move really freely. Just makes a big difference in articulation and yeah, you know, it it adds a lot, you know. You wouldn't think it does, but it really helps significantly. So that's one of my favorite things to do. And I really like these links. You know, the high clearance aspect is functional, but they also look fantastic. The four link conversion and then the, the O-ring trick, those all come together and really make the linkage a really great upgrade. So once you're able to articulate and move really freely with the linkage, you can really capitalize on these long travel shocks. So these are the power hobby 54 millimeter shocks. Now these are 54 millimeters end to end, eye to eye. They're about 48 millimeters, but still a really long shock and offer a ton of travel. So the Bronco has got quite a bit of flex now. You know, I did, did not get nearly close to that early on in the build. So it's really come a long way. For the steering components, steering is kind of custom to the drivetrain so they they kind of intertwine here and this is the billet little guy racing parts steering linkage up front and that's that's a necessity when you do the billet axles which we'll get into from a steering perspective we've got an emax analog servo with a endura servo horn on there i've got the endura aluminum mount also, which allows for the four link conversion really easily. In the back, we also did the Grizzly Works flex extensions on here. Now I do this for a couple of reasons. One is that it just gives you a little bit of extra travel, not a little bit, it gives you actually some significant boost in travel, but primarily it gives you a low ride height. So I was really trying to bring the Bronco center of gravity down because with the hard body, it's really top heavy. So moving these shocks, you know, we move the fronts down into the, kind of the, the bend of the frame here to lower this thing down. And then in the back, the flex extensions really help because they set the shock basically behind the axle. And that allows it to sit even lower than it would when you had the shocks at the angle here. I find this is a better approach than trying to mess with these shocks moving them forward because I, I feel like this is really the optimal spot from a frame mounted shock position and then the flex extensions really just give it that nice level ride height sits nice and low so i really like the stance on this thing we've also done the big heavy treel brass knuckles up here now these are the the newest treel knuckles and it, it's tough to see but i mean this whole component is one thick piece of brass you know really really monstrous steering knuckles here so it's got a ton of weight in the front with these knuckles so behind these massive steering knuckles we've also got plus seven millimeter hex extensions slash wheel weight combo in here and then in the back we've just got hex extensions so really tried to bias the weight in the front on the bronco 
so it, that's why it's got a ton of brass up in the front and not as much in the back because you know trying to shift that weight distribution up front you know that uh the brass knuckles in the front and this this kind of weight distribution this was another thing that was transformative in the build when we did this you know that that combination made a huge difference in the climbing ability and the overall performance of the bronco so i think that's it from a chassis and suspension let's check out the drivetrain now this is a really this is a good part so let's get into that so let's get into the really fun stuff here the drivetrain this is where this thing really shines i glossed over a couple things on the chassis and suspension so let me back up a little bit so it's also running my diy limiting straps here you know i use the rubber band it's one rubber band that's looped around the linkage behind the servo mount and then up around the body post and that just you know it's a little loose right now but that just keeps the front end under control keeps the drive shaft intact when that long travel suspension is doing its thing it started off with a grizzly works low center gravity chassis kit and this is the this back piece is the only remaining remnant of that earlier in the build i had the full kit on here which made a big difference and was a you know a perfect fit when i had the brushed motor set up in here but when we went to the brushless i had to remove the front piece and kind of customize a um esc mount up here in the front to kind of make things work so I've, I've kept the rear of the grizzly work setup which i really like so those are some of the the lingering chassis and suspension components that i kind of glossed over now let's get into the drivetrain so this thing is running the furitech komodo the big komodo brushless setup here with the furitech stellar transmission so i bought this as the combo i think it was 100 bucks 99 dollars for this combo here direct bolt-in beautiful unit here the red anodized finish and the black motor this is just a gorgeous combination i'm really really happy with it and it performs amazing i have the micro komodo in the gladiator and they're very different you know they, this i feel like is smoother on the bottom and has more torque right off the right off the bat but doesn't wind out as far or as fast but just a beautiful looking piece of hardware here man it's it just like fits so well in the bronco i love it really really happy with it to operate that setup i've got the fury tech micro receiver here and i've got the lizard pro over on the other side now i mounted these to either side of the motor on the rock sliders and it just gives it a nice clean clean look i can close the body everything's tucked in really nice and i've still got room for my battery here everything works out really good so i love the drivetrain here this motor and transmission is amazing super happy with it if i flip it over Yeah, we've got even more magic underneath here. So the billet axles, man, these Super 8 axles by Little Guy Racing Parts in the billet aluminum, these are gorgeous. And I was so happy to get a score a set of these for the Bronco. So they come with the brass diff covers on the inside and just give it a just super custom, clean, awesome look to it. I love the axles and it just really gives it a great, with a great stance and they they're fantastic so and they've held up really well you know this this billet has really held up to some abuse they look great they still i've had no issues with them they're fantastic i'm running steel drive shafts front and rear that's one of the newest additions that i did i try to shore up the whole drivetrain when i put the brushless system in there so i don't break anything so with the stellar transmission and the steel drive shafts it's metal all the way through. So really hoping that it holds up well. It's got good longevity and lots of strength. So that's what I'm after here. The Super 8 axles, they've got hardened steel CVD axles in the front and steel shafts in the back, but did the CVDs in the front for extra strength. So it's, it's really set up really well right now to take some abuse. And I'm oh man, I'd love the drivetrain on this thing i'm super happy with the drivetrain so that's going to wrap it up for the build overview and that's going to wrap it up for the bronco build series my friends thank you so much for joining me on this journey the bronco has grown 
as the channel and as this community has grown. It really, this 10 episode project really kind of grew in parallel with the channel and my love for the hobby and this awesome community that we're building. So I can't thank you all enough for supporting the build. I hope you had fun watching it. I hope you learned something. I certainly did. I'm learning every episode, if you can't tell. I'm still working my way around these things, trial and error, and having a ton of fun sharing it with you all along the way. So I hope you enjoyed this series as well. So I gotta give a shout out to the companies who have helped us along the way. Little Guy Racing Parts, RC All Wheel Drive, Flubber Stuffers, you know, there's a bunch of people that have really helped us with this build and given us the opportunity to try out awesome parts and also incorporate it into the build and make it that much better. And it couldn't have done it without those guys. So really appreciate the support from everybody. The community can't thank you enough. So as we close the book on the Bronco build, let me know your thoughts down below what we should do next. I really want to keep the momentum up. I'm, I'm riding high after this Bronco build and after the competition and everything. So I want to keep the energy up. I want to keep it going into a new build. So let me know your thoughts down below what you would like to see me build on the channel. What can we do to really shake things up? I'd like to do something kind of fun, new and exciting, something different for the 24s. I've got some really great things planned, some new builds that I think you're really going to like, but I definitely want to hear your input. So let me know down below. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey in the Bronco build. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was a blast, and I really I loved sharing it with you all. So thanks so much for supporting it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Thanks so much for watching again, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm. Tastes like victory. Come here often. <laughs> How many subscribers am I going to lose with this? <laughs> Cheers.